And uh, now I'd like to welcome uh, Tay Kim, who is a camping, uh, des camping equipment designer who's uh, been design director at North Face and Timbuktu and now has his own company, Alight Designs. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, A-Light. A-Light. A-Light Designs um, to make camping uh, excellent and more fun for a lot of people. I hear he can fight a bear with a beer in one hand and throws an excellent party. Uh, oh. Give it up oh, for yeah. Take Him. Uh, so... Uh, I, I'm the one who broke the elevator so that you had to hike up here. Uh, I heard they got it fixed, uh, but I wanted you to feel like you were going for a hike today. Um, so I'm an uh, outdoor equipment designer. Uh, originally, uh, I, I'm from Alaska. I became a car designer um, for my first career, but uh, it wasn't that much fun. It took seven years to actually make a, a car. Uh, who's been in a cop car before? Cop car, yes, right. So uh, the bumper on that cop car is all mine. So, so, um, so I've been working as an outdoor equipment designer for over a decade. Uh, I've been working for the North Face, Timbuktu, and a bunch of other companies. Uh, it's a real specialized field, and uh, um, with uh, you don't really, uh, there's no school for it, and so you kind of luck out and end up working for a, a company like the North Face and they teach you how to design tents, sleeping bags, and backpacks. Um, there's about seven tent designers in the world today, and uh, unfortunately, there's only four jobs out in the marketplace. <laughs> so, yeah. um, today, I'm gonna talk to you about A-Light Design. Uh, it's a company I started two, three years ago with a bunch of friends. So it's, uh, basically, it's for beginner campers. Um, we gotta figure out a better term for beginner campers, but. Basically, that's what it's all about. Uh, we really think that uh, it's really hard for people to go out camping. So who's actually an avid camper here? Avid camper. Who kind of go, who goes a little bit once in a while? Uh, who has never gone camping? Okay. You're my like perfect customer group. And so <laughs> we like to say that uh, we make camping gear for people who hate camping. And so. <laughs> Uh, we really believe that we can make camping gear more fun, easy, interesting, and we also want to help you get outside more. Um, so let's start with current state of the outdoors. Uh, there's a lot of outdoor companies, and um, they're actually all owned by big uh, apparel companies now, like North Face and a bunch of other companies are owned by uh, clothing companies, and they're really trying to push like clothing through making it seem like uh, you have to climb Everest to actually wear the, their gear. Um, it makes it really hard for beginners to actually go to uh, REI and say, I really just want to watch birds outside. I want to take a little hike. And so A-Light really tries to figure out what new customers, uh, um, new people who are new to the outside want. So we've done a lot of research, so a lot of times um, new uh, people, uh, they don't really know where to go. They're really scared of animals uh, and uh, scary noises outside. Um, uh, they have a hard time peeing and pooping outside. So we, <laughs> we concentrate a lot on, on that. So I think I've been thinking about peeing and pooping for the last two years. And so um, it's also too expensive because they only use it a couple times a year. And so we're, uh, we're trying to focus in on that. Um, also, uh, they don't really know what to do, where to go, so it's a lot to do with like information. And so, uh, we're also trying to make it really fun. Um, so today, we're going to talk about sex in the woods. So, we make sleeping bags that are made for having sex outside. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm going to talk through uh, kind of the design process, why we came up with this idea, and it's been a big big hit for us, and so, uh, uh, so we'll, talk, we'll talk about that, all right? All right, so I am from Alaska. Uh, most, most people think Alaska is somewhere in Mexico, <laughs> but it's not, and so uh, it's up here. And it is true, uh, you can't see Russia from Alaska, and uh, the unfortunate thing about Alaska is that there's really only three girls in Alaska. Uh, Sarah Palin, Bristol Palin, 
and a lady that surprisingly looks like Large Marge from <laughs> Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, and so you, growing up there, you really think about sex all the time, or <laughs> not having sex all the time. Uh, so when I, was, uh, <laughs> when I was in high school, I used to work at this place called The Natural Pantry. Uh, so it was like uh, Whole Foods, but it was in the 80s, so before kind of organic grocery stores were popular, I was working at this place. Um, and it was just a hotbed of young college students who like drove up to Alaska, the eclectic kind. A lot of people from Oberlin and UC Santa Barbara, UC Santa Cruz. And so they were all like my mentors. So I was uh, in high school and I didn't really want to go to college. And so a bunch of friends like took me under their wings and I just had a great time. I, I learned about the lower 48 states working at the uh, natural pantry. So um, while working there, there was a, a, a good mentor of mine. He looked like Hugh uh, Jackman. And then there was this beautiful girl working there. She looked like Irma, Uma Thurman. And so uh, I was working there all summer. And um, uh, Uma had dr driven up in her Volkswagen uh, van. She was from Oberlin. And uh, Hugh uh, biked up to Alaska, and he was from UC Santa Barbara. And so when I was working there, I think the last day I was there, I was ready to go, go to college. Uh, and uh, uh, Uma asked me, hey, we should go camping. We should go camping for a week before you go off to college. We could drive my bus all over Alaska and go see Mount McKinley. Um, to which I said, nah, I think I'm going to buy school supplies and get ready for school. <laughs> so uh, Hugh came up to me, grabbed me, and, and kind of whacked me up, upside my head and said, what are you doing? There's only three girls in Alaska. <laughs> the most beautiful girl just asked you out. Uh, when a girl asks you out and, uh, to go camping, that means she wants to get it on. <laughs> So on his recommendation, I went camping with Uma, and it was just a really great time period. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so in my mind, I'm thinking camping equals sex, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, needless to say, it was a pleasure town in, uh, in the last week of, uh, of uh, uh, Alaska. Um, so let's get back into design. So you know that <laughs> camping equals sex. And so um, most sleeping bags that are out there uh, do connect together. But uh, it's not so good. It's, uh, the sleeping bags are really tight. They're made for Everest type adventures. So we decided we're going to make them a little bit more uh, comfortable, a little bit looser so that you can move around in them. Uh, we put zippers, but we spent the extra dollar and put zippers on both sides. So you could actually connect as many as you want. <laughs> so uh, we, we do give group discounts at my company, so, <laughs> so please do ask about it. Okay? Um, so the next thing we thought about was, uh, how do we get to the erogenous zones? Um, now, uh, these are the primary, and so, uh, <laughs> and so uh, we were thinking about uh, putting zippers, putting, uh, like flaps and things like that on the sleeping bag. But we settled with zippers that go from uh, waist level through the inseam and all the way back. Uh, what that also did was it allowed you to walk in them. And so we put slippers on the bottom of the, of the feet. So what you got with, was this amazing, <laughs> amazing design where you could walk in them and, and you, you could see that you still have access to the uh, erogenous zone. <laughs> and you can do handstands in them. Um, on top of it is, uh, <laughs> if you did not want to take your sleeping bag off uh, out of the out of the tent, you don't have to. You could just come out and like you could use the bathroom in them. Uh, what girls have asked, like, whoa, how, how about us? Uh, you can take the, the legs and wrap it around you and, and squat in them as well. So it's been tested a lot this past two years. Right. Um, also, the interior, interior lining has an emboss in it, so, 
just in case you have forgotten different positions, you can use this as a guide, right? So, surprisingly, the male characters all have a, a top bun hairstyle in, in the same <laughs> style as, as myself. <laughs> so, so, this has been a big hit for us. Um, uh, uh, the traditional outdoor places uh, thought that it was a little too risque, so they, they didn't take it. But on our uh, online store, this is one of our popular products. It sells out every year. Um, the funny thing is, uh, we get a lot of orders that are two sleeping bags at a time, but it's actually mothers buying their newlyweds uh, wedding gifts. And so, and they're a little bit active and they, they want them to be outside. So we get a lot of like wedding gifts and little notes. We have a little section where you can write interesting notes. So I read all of them and they're really great. <laughs> <laughs> they're really great, really great. And so, you know, we're trying to make it fun. We're making it, making it so that you could go outside together. Uh, you could enjoy it with the company of your friends. And it has a certain slant on design that's a little bit more fun than the traditional serious like outdoorsy stuff. Um, so we took that and we started doing marketing like events and stuff. So we actually started putting on singles mixers. Um, so we interviewed a bunch of people who were interested in going outside and they wanted to meet someone special. And so we gathered together 50, 30-ish, uh, 20-ish uh, uh, people and took them to a bar that looks like a little lodge. So the Bloodhound Bar down in uh, Soma. And so we had a singles mixer and it was a huge hit. Like um, We had special badges. It was almost like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts that told you uh, a person's interest and they mingled and we had events where they talked about outdoor activities. We gave away prizes that were all outdoor events. So it could be like a, a, a bicycle carriage ride outside, uh, going for a, a ferry ride, uh, going for various things. And so through it, we uh, had a huge amount of success with uh, our, our sleeping bags. So, uh, um, a, a bunch of couples came out of it and they're still together and so if they uh, if they start to get married and have babies then they're gonna name them uh, a light sexy hotness sleeping bags so, so. Uh, then we also uh, took those sleeping bags in that crowd and took them camping and so we went to uh, uh, Cape Farms. so there's plenty of organic farms in California that let you camp on their sites and it's the most amazing thing and so we make food a part of uh, the social interaction. We also use alcohol as well. Uh, and uh, so like wine and like cooking uh, organic food and bringing in chefs. Uh, we ran a camping 101 where we taught people how to go camping. So we, not only the sleeping bag, but we actually showed them basics of like how to go camping. And it was really surprising. We learned a lot. Uh, you tell people, bring this, this, this. And because they don't have the knowledge base, a decide, no, I don't think I'm going to bring it. Uh, so we asked them to bring a sleeping pad, and no one, no one brought it. They're like, why didn't you bring it? So, uh, I'm just used to sleeping in a sleeping bag just by itself. But you really need a sleeping pad. And so we brought a bunch of extras and helped them out and taught them what all the benefits of the core pieces of camping, uh, camping gear are. So that was a huge hit. Um, next. Uh, <laughs> We tried to break the world record for sleeping bags connected together. I think the record was two. Um, we, sh we shattered it. We shattered it. So, so 69 sleeping bags. And so uh, we went to a music festival in, um, in uh, New Hampshire. And we partnered up with a, a really great outdoor company called EMS. And, uh, and at this music festival, um, oh, if you helped us out in this breaking of this record, uh, you got a free sleeping bag. But through it, like, it was just a big like, party. Like All the people down on the bottom, you could see, they were just so in love with the sleeping bag and just interacting with people because sleeping bags aren't really that sexy. It's not really that talked about. And so this was really great. And um, it really uh, showed like, um, how fun you could have with these like, sleeping bags. Uh, so we gave those out um, to everyone. Um, um, you know, this was a big hit. Um, I'm going to give you some, some tips on um, 
uh, Sex in the Woods. Uh, it's, a, it's a book written by Michelle Waltzman, and she wrote a book called Sex in a Tent. And so uh, here's some key uh, tips for you guys, just in case you guys want to go out and have sex outdoors, all right? Um, so get away. Get away from things, right? Uh, don't have sex in a family campground next to another <laughs> tent full of kids. <laughs> go somewhere away, all right? Uh, keep it simple. Uh, this is not the time to try out the whole Kama Sutra book, right? Uh, keep it simple. The tent isn't that big. Um, use a condom. This isn't a, isn't a safe sex lecture, but like, uh, like keep it clean. Like it makes things cleaning up tents and stuff easier. <laughs> she says bag it up. So uh, she says invest in a sleeping bag that, that connects together. Like the sexy hotness would be a great idea. Right? <laughs> And then uh, be obvious, like, uh, like uh, people do have sex outside. People do have sex uh, underneath the stars. So uh, promote it, uh, ask for it. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so that's kind of the story about uh, our sleeping bag and um, uh, Sex in the Woods. And uh, it's been really fun creating this company. Um, sexy Hotness is one part of the whole picture. Uh, but for a uh what we're trying to do is uh, instead of trying to sell products, what we're trying to do is try to inspire people, uh, inform them about how to go camping, um, so that they're just really inspired to go out there. So this year, we will be um, uh, renting and lending gear out to people. So uh, it, tents are the biggest hurdle for people to buy because they don't see value in buying a two, three hundred dollar tent. But with a light, you could just uh, rent them from us. And so um, also uh, we'll have a little lending library. Uh, we noticed that Oakland Libraries have, has a tool library. And so what we want to do is uh, have a lending library of camping gear. And then our mission isn't to get everyone to go camping right away. Uh, we'll be promoting events like mushroom hunting, bird watching, going to the beach. And once you get really comfortable, then I think you should go camping. And so it's going to be like a year or two year journey with Alight, and we're going to try to help you guys get outside more often. Um, I had a crazy uncle uh, growing up in Alaska. Uh, I think most crazy uncles, uh, y'all all have a crazy uncle. They either live in Alaska or Minnesota. <laughs> and so, uh, so my crazy uncle Gene, he was an American GI. And he taught me how to go camping, but it wasn't kind of the traditional outside magazine type way. It was always with a little like slice of life, a little tip here, a little interesting factoid there. And he did sprinkle in a lot of like sexual like like tips and stuff and like uh, you know birds and the bees. And so uh, he was just a great guy. And so in a lot of our products in our um, packaging, you'll uh, when you open it up you'll see Uncle Gene's tips, and uh, uh, he'll explain to you very interesting tips for, for going outside. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, that was it for as far as my presentation. I think I'm doing good on time. And, uh, so if you have any questions. Uh, give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> well, Do you use any uh, specific materials in your products? Um, on the sexy hotness sleeping bag, we decided to pick uh, materials that were really washable. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that felt great on the skin because most sleeping bags do feel like plastic bags on your body, and so we did find um, uh, fabric that was washable and softer. Uh, how washable are the tents? Because I'd love to rent one for burning man. Yeah. Uh, so tents are washable, um, and so but its timing is the most important part. So you can't stuff it inside a stuff sack and let it sit there for a couple weeks, and then expect it to like be all nice and like smelly. Like uh, yeah, it, it's really about the PU coating, and and uh, it gets a little stinky if you like stuff it into a stuff sack for a while. But uh, like soap and like water will be really great for the tents and stuff. Yeah, so it, it's 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 a weird weird thing. Um, there, there there's not really a, a com, uh, camping competition, but we thought about how easy um, IKEA furniture is uh, uh, made to assemble somewhat. 
Uh, and then uh, we love the fact that uh, uh, Apple products um, really had like a simple product line. And then we really love uh, Patagonia and kind of what they've done. And so back there, plaid shirt. What happened to Uma? What's that? <laughs> what happened to Uma? Oh, um, Uma lives in Indiana. And so she's doing well. She's married. And uh, uh, she still has that like, great like, spark in life. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I when I quit um, my job at the North Face, I had worked for them for about seven years. When I quit, I knew I kind of wanted a break, but I knew that I. I wanted to get into this beginner camping world. And as luck would have it, the, uh, a week after I quit, I was walking down the street, and a friend of mine who had just sold a big uh, tech company uh, was walking across the street, and he was like, hey, I just sold my company. And I said, hey, I'd like to open up a company. <laughs> and uh, and he's, he's been a friend that I wanted to work with for a while, and then that's how a -Light got started. Uh, I don't think you can really plan on walking around San Francisco that way, but, <laughs> but yeah, it was really great. And so uh, he's one of my business partners, Rob Nail. So, yeah. uh, where do you manufacture? Uh, so we ma manufacture everything uh, all over the world. So we're in Chico, California. A lot of my friends uh, own the factories, and they're also Korean, and so they we make stuff in Seoul, Korea. And then we work in this really great, like uh, ethically. Um, produce factory in the Philippines and so uh, I think next year we'll be trying to find uh, hiking boot um, factories in Italy as well. Where is your favorite local place in camp? Uh, Angel Island. Yes. Angel Island. Ah, so good. So good. If you haven't gone you guys should go. It's the most amazing thing to take the take the BART down and just get out take the ferry and then walk up to your campsite and it's so it's so uh, different than San Francisco but you could look at it so <laughs> so it's almost like Alcatraz and so, yeah, so. Uh, so we thought long and hard about temperature ratings for the sexy hotness um, most temperature ratings um, they don't really make sense um, to beginners nor did it make sense to me when I was designing them uh, because it's, it's all about um, a certain rating system um, that's very different than how people perceive like temperature. So um, ours is a 20 degree temperature rating, but really we like to say that it's really great for um, end of spring camping and beginning of fall camping and everything in between. So it's like the perfect temperature rating for kind of an all, all around uh, sleeping bag. Back there. Um, I think uh, there's plenty of companies that uh, do the technical stuff really well. So, um, so I think we would love for them to just like go with other companies. And uh, we've partnered up with uh, some amazing other companies. So if you guys uh, have the time, you guys should check out Nemo Tents. Um, so they make blow up tents and also technical tents. And it's a designer out of RISD. And he's, such a, he's a really great guy. His name is Cam. And he just recently started it maybe four or five years ago. And he's doing a lot of fantastic stuff. Uh, most outdoor companies are um, uh, big size corporations. Um, there aren't that many independent camping companies around anymore. So there's a lot of little mom and pops. So I think there's just a, a handful of companies that are trying to do what we're trying to do. So it's, it's great. There's a great like um, teamwork, community environment within this kind of newer uh, camping design group. Uh, most camping products actually started in Berkeley. Uh, so North Face and Sierra Designs all stayed, started out in Berkeley. And so this area has a huge heritage of starting amazing um, technical uh, camping companies. You mentioned the importance of sleeping pads. Uh -huh. Did you have sleeping pads for sex and that connects to the So, so uh, we're starting to carry Nemo sleeping pads. And so when I was growing up, um, uh, I thought sleeping pads had to be really, really thin, and that if you um, 
um, that going camping meant that your back hurts, that like you slept really badly. Uh, but Nemo started making uh, sleeping pads uh, that are uh, blow-up sleeping pads, um, but they're really lightweight, but they're more comfortable than my bed. And so we decided that that was like good enough that uh, we really want to recreate your sleeping experience from home to the outdoors. Um, so that, I think that's really key. So they carry a sleeping pad that's really amazing. And so we'll be starting to sell them in, in a month or so. Okay. So okay. how much durable are those inflatable sleeping pads? I've done a lot of backpacking yep. and the biggest problem is like they work great for one person. Yeah. Uh, so these, these are the best that you can buy. And so, yes, blow up tents, uh, blow up uh, sleeping uh, pads can puncture, but we, from relative to everything we've seen, this is by far the top quality. And so everything's kind of taking a nice step up uh, recently. And so that's why we started carrying like blow up uh, sleeping pads. Flat um, shirt right there. Uh, so the, uh, the sleeping bag is the one that's the most risque, but we make other products that uh, sell at REI and stuff. Um, we make a, a camping chair that only has two legs, um, and it's one of the most comfortable chairs you could buy for, uh, for outside, and it's a, only one pound, and it's about this big, and you can fit it in your, in your bag. And so you should check out our website. Uh, so that's been doing really well. Um, uh, but it's been interesting doing business with like kind of the old school camping retail stores because they don't really um, know what to make of us. And so they know that their age group is uh, older in their 40s. So I think REI's age group is about in their 40s. They're really interested in getting younger people to get out there, but they're using kind of older marketing kind of uh, direction uh, to that. And so we really think that we have an interesting opportunity to um, create a, a new kind of brand for beginner campers to go to. So we, we are thinking about opening up retail stores. Um, uh, I think this year you'll see several pop-up stores that we'll do um, in San Francisco. Uh, and we'll be carrying everyone's stuff that would, would make going outside easier. So a lot of the stuff you can't really find at uh, REI um, that we'll be carrying. So check out our website and you'll, you'll see a little bits of like that type of stuff. Um, we carry like hand crank radios, disaster kind of kits, uh, bird calling, whistles. Uh, so everything around interesting activities like bird watching and mushroom hunting. Uh, anyone, anyone? Um, do you sell well internationally? Are there any kind of surprising places you sell really well? So the top, so the top uh, four marketplaces for outdoor gear is um, um, US is the top. Uh, then it's uh, Korea then uh, Germany and Japan. So we're in Japan and Korea, and we're, we're being carried by the North Face distributor, um, uh, Goldwyn, and they um, own the rights to North Face in Japan, and we are sold in their stores. So they own the North Face stores as well, so they uh, sell A-Lite stuff as a uh, complementary brand um, with the North Face stuff. Um, so. In Japan, it's going off. People are so cool, and the younger generation loves camping, and it all started with uh, music festivals. They have this huge music festival called Fuji Rock, and everyone gets dressed in colorful camping gear, and it's like 30,000 people um, it, near Tokyo uh, that go to this music festival. Um, I think it, it made it into the news maybe 10 years ago when Beastie Boys played played in a tsunami uh, and like it was like a crazy crazy uh, concert uh, but that's the the music festival that everyone uh, goes to and that's been driving the uh, outdoor camping market and then now uh, with a generation that has been going camping like that there's now starting to go venture off uh, backpacking and so there's a big boom in Japan happening right now that's all about going backpacking Yeah, so um, uh, like I said, we make uh, furniture, and um, I'm trying to make, uh, I love Eames uh, chairs and furniture from mid-century, uh, but I've been trying to do more transient nomadic furniture, 
And if you guys go look at it, you'll see some um, ins uh, inspiration um, that, uh, from the EAM stuff that I'm, I'm trying to like uh, uh, work into our furniture line. Uh, so we'll be working on uh, more furniture. That's been going really well. That's, um, you know, we sell about 30,000 ch uh, uh, chairs. Of the, the, it's called the Monarch chair a year. And then we make utensil sets that all kind of nest together. Uh, we think food is a very, really important thing, and so we want to target how you carry food, not only uh, camping, but also uh, here in the city, biking and stuff. And our backpack line has been doing really well, and so we make really simple, kind of toned down backpacks. I think most backpacks in the outdoor world have so many gadgets and pockets on them uh, that we've actually toned it down. And, uh, we play around with a little bit more color and stuff. Uh, we make a, a tent that looks like a 1970s Winnebago. Um, and so it even has a California license plate uh, 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 screen printed on the, on the fly. And so uh, it's a pretty cool little like, tent design. So it's the perfect tent for a beginner camper. So. Okay, I think we have uh, time for one more question. Is there one more out there? Oh yeah, all the time, all the time. So, uh, so I, um, a bunch of friends and I have been thinking about some really technical backpacks that we've been um, uh, always thinking about making, um, but uh, we, it wasn't an exact fit for A-Lite, so we actually spun it off and we called it, uh, the company's called Boreas, after the Greek god of the north wind. Uh, you guys can check it out, boreasgear.com. And it's a super technical backpack, but it's really affordable, and it's not, it's made to be simple. And that just recently won a big award from uh, the outside uh, magazines that are out there. And so uh, it was the first time that like a very like new company actually has uh, won an award in the backpack category. So, uh, so that was a really great outlet for us to get out something that we've been thinking about, ha um, had a great idea, make it and put it out there. And so. Um, so, uh, most of the people who are sitting here are my um, design and business partners, and so they help out a lot with uh, some of the designs. So, thank you. Okay.